There's always been people that are like doing secret things on the fringe, you know? There's always been people like that that are doing like forbidden secret things in society. Yeah, little little penis people. A lot. <laughs> that has that? to be what it is, you know? You got you got to find something to like obsess about. You got to like distract people from your real issue sometimes. I think there's also like people that are in these like elite circles of like world leaders and shit like that. I think they probably like to do the creepiest, most deranged shit secretly. You know, like they have these little secret societies together. For sure. I think I think it's always so, been the case. There's gotta be some weird shit going on. Always. Too much time and money on your hands can lead to some like how do, how do I achieve the next level of being elite? You know what I mean? There All was right. this um uh, guy in so, like, when I used to go work at my dad's body shop, we stop at this gas station sometimes. And that area was a lot of, like, it's like a hood area that would neighbor, like, the mansion area. So, there's, like, a lot of rich folk around there, too. And sometimes, man, there'd be people doing weird shit. There was a guy. This little memory still goes through my head. Not, like, elite weird shit, but just weird. Like, there was a guy who would hold, like, his paintings, like, from his house. He had, like, really nice paintings. The park. He'd have, he had, like, an old school... I don't remember what he drove. So it was fucking expensive. I just remember this guy's like rich. I mean, just hold like these fucking paintings and just stand on the street like a homeless man, and it's just fucking. Just wanted everybody to see his painting. Yeah, it's just nuts. He just, it's just fucking rich, oh. crazy guy with way too much time on his hands. And when I saw that, I was like, bro, like, once you reach a level of money, like, you probably just do crazy shit just for the fuck out, just for, just because you can. You know what I mean? Especially if all you do is make money. Like, that's what those dominatrix ladies always say. That their clients are always these guys who are like these CEOs of mega corporations and they just want to get pissed on and yelled yeah. at and slapped. It's fucking nuts. Yeah, they want to get tied up and thrown in the corner. Shut the fuck up. And they come over and kick them in the balls. <laughs> they want that. Bro, did you, uh, you ever seen that movie? I mean, it's like they made the movie about the movie The Room. Yeah. <laughs> that was like Tommy Wiseau mm -hmm. or what's his name? I don't remember his name. I, I, I always mess it up. But there's that scene in the movie that made fun of the movie where like Joe Rogan's character, like right. the director, goes to the bank and he's right. like, I want to cash this check. And they're like, all right, yeah. And he's like, holy shit, it worked. And the, the bank teller's telling him, he's just like, this guy's bank account is like a bottomless pit. That amount of money has to be kind of scary, though. Because you either go make shitty movies with your money, then you don't know what the fuck you're doing, like that guy, which is funny. Or you probably you also do scary shit. Like, that's a scary amount of money to have. So I know I know people who, like, you know, struggle financially, probably like, oh, man, if I, if I could just have this money, if I could just have that money. Like, yeah, life would be easier. But if there's no challenge, if there's no maze to run through, what are you really going to do with that much free time? I'll tell you what you're going to do. You're going to get in a homemade submarine and die in the ocean. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Like, yeah, those fucking... dudes. That's exactly what that was like. That was $250,000 a ticket to get in that submarine. And die. Why? And the submarine had no windows, right? Well, it had like little small windows. You don't really see, you're seeing things through a screen. They call me old school, but I feel like if I spent $250,000 on the ticket, I want like a luxurious experience. I want to see the fucking ocean, yeah. not through a tiny little Clearly. screen. I want communication with mm -hmm. the outside world. Like, I don't know. I, am, I, I do want to get rich. Don't get me wrong. I do want to get rich because I feel like pretty soon, they're, you know. What are you going to buy? I what kind want of car are you going to get? I, I mean, I'm not too worried about all that. I really want to save on, money you like to like painting. Don't you want to? I want to go to the moon. Oh, you're one of those dudes. Yeah, Elon Musk is probably gonna offer rides soon. You know, two hundred fifty bucks, two hundred fifty thousand a ticket. I um, think you could already get into space for that amount of cheddar. Yeah. Yeah, I think you can get into space for like two fifty. I want to go to space. Like the Blue Origin, don't they fly people into space? Bro, you want to wait a few years. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I definitely want them to get the kinks yeah, out. Get you know the what kinks I mean? Out. Work out the glitches. You don't want to. You don't want to die in a fiery ball of hell. Yeah. Crashing into the ocean, burning alive. Nah. Yeah. Uh, Blue Origin for suborbital flights. Blue Origin typically charges around two hundred to three hundred thousand dollars per person. The cost includes a one-hour flight and a three-hour preparation program. For those looking to go into orbit, Blue Orbit Origin's orbital launch services range from fifty million. To one hundred million per person, that's a, yo. That's a big difference. <laughs> that is a giant difference. All right. Suborbital is that good? You go up for I think they send you up for about a minute or two, and then you just float back down. Hmm. Back down. How far do you go? 
What's the height? What's suborbital? Suborbital means you're not going out technically of the range where you need to go. You're going very, very high. That's like where they sent William Shatner to it. Is that where they send the guy? Remember the guy who sky dove from oh, the outer that layer? wild motherfucker. For yeah. Red Bull or whatever? Yeah, that's my friend. Yeah? That's Andy Stump. Man. If yeah, I, he's a I'll, psychopath. I'll was want, it Andy that did no, the... No, no, no. no like, that's uh, a different guy. Yeah, yeah. Andy did, but Andy did something similar. He was on yeah. a fucking plane. So there's suborbital right here. Okay, this is suborbital. So they're still floating. So they're above Earth. They get to look down. They're weightless. Look at William Shatner. He's like, I'm too old for this. But shit. you don't, you don't get way up there where you're looking down on the ball. I don't even think that's fun right there. Because are you even? It's like I feel like the Earth is so bright you can't even see the stars and shit. You definitely probably won't see a star. There. No, you don't see the stars. That's not worth it. I'm not doing that. But I think to see the stars, you gotta go. Way I don't. Yeah, I don't the know that they're even there. seeing them in the spaceship. You gotta Maybe go way the fuck do. up there. Yeah. I want to go into, like, the abyss. You probably do when you're on the dark side, don't you think, Jamie? Yeah, but how many... No one's been there for a long time. Right, but you, you go over there for a whiz, right? You're like, it's real fast. You're going, like, 17,000 miles an hour, right? Isn't that the space station? Yeah, I honestly... I mean, we'd have to, I could look... We have to look into this. I think the only star you could probably see is the sun. Huh. Well, it's gonna have when to you're be, on the other side, the dark side? changing my financial I don't know. You got to get a hundred million it. bucks, bro. You got to go way up. I wonder how much it costs for them to send me to like a wormhole or a black hole. Well, you don't want to do that. Nah, nah, nah. If, um, I, if I'm like... Imagine it come, you come back and you're in the Mongol days. You're like, motherfucker. What is you, the Mongol days? Like when Genghis Khan ruled the earth and killed oh, 10% man. of the population. That would suck. It sucked to, I don't know. I'd hope not even to come back, though. I'd just go somewhere else. Maybe there's like another planet, another universe. Another dimension. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe. Remember when Bradley Cooper went through it and then he came back and Earth was like saved, but they're like living in these like cylinder fourth dimension things or something like that? Huh. Was it Interstellar? You see Interstellar? Oh, that wasn't Bradley Cooper. That was Matthew McConaughey, right? Matthew McConaughey. I yeah. always get his name mixed up. I was confused. <laughs> yeah. Bradley Cooper will get his chance too, but yeah, Matthew McConaughey. Yeah, that was I, a great movie. Bro, even he got back in the ship and was like, nah, I'm out. So yeah. Okay, during spacewalk in Earth's shadow, astronauts can see stars once their eyes adjust to the darkness. Holy shit, your eyes have to adjust to the darkness of space. Right. But that's spacewalks in Earth's shadow. I don't think that's the same. They don't go okay. behind the moon, though. They space station, a habitable artificial satellite in low Earth orbit that serves the space environment. That okay. ship, that trip I've told you about a few times that uh, Steve Aoki is supposed to go on. It's supposed to be like one of the first manned trips back around the moon since. Steve Aoki, don't die on the moon. <laughs> Bro, I've Steve said Aoki. this to him before. I'm going to say it again. Don't do it, buddy. That guy is fucking badass. He's badass. He's a cool dude, too. First you know a lot of cool people. To the moon. He's very cool. But I don't on think crew for first mission to the moon, Steve. You want to be on the one hundredth mission. But by the way.